I couldn't get with a small a small service fee. That's it. Right now, I hear from people in who are paying back their student loans. Or it's going to take like thirty years to get their hundred thousand dollars paid back. Okay, we have a request for Mr. Wright. Thank you for uh, requesting that. We, of course, will oblige. We're an interactive virtual chat show in the political realm, and uh, this is what we do. That's what makes this a fun show, I think, and we share links. If you guys have great links, feel free to post them, and I will put them in our lineup, including videos for tonight's late-night show. It says too good to be true, but I, I never really understood that lyric, so I, I, I can't really explain that. So, yeah, I, I don't know if it's true or it's too good to be true. But we're on Truth Tuesday today, and we're trying to figure out what's going on. So I posted this. Any president that would defend Russia over evidence provided by his own intelligence team is a traitor and a puppet. So now when Bob Woodward uh, exposes him and he gets into a verbal conversation with Woodward, it shows Donald Trump is not really uh, abreast of what's really happening around him. It, he's kind of lost. He doesn't understand that we've all seen the lies, the cheating, the deception, uh, all the people that he's surrounded himself with. They're criminals now, proven criminals. Eight felony counts for Michael Cohen, eight felony counts for Paul Manafort. I'm trying to, you know, make sure that. I at least have an opportunity to try to help the country. Right now, we can't even get our word out. We're being censored so heavily that it's hard to actually keep this positive force going in lieu of all the attacks. It really is. But I know people want a political movement, but you realize we are being censored hard. Uh, you know, Ricky Lake, uh, her, her old look or her new look? No, I've never used the N-word, oi goy. Never have. Yeah, I mean, do I like her? She's a woman who stepped out and, you know, had to deal with a weight issue when she was growing up and was a pretty much a, a pretty good talk show personality for years. Why are we talking about Ricky Lake again, exactly? I, I'm not really sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, Trump tried to issue posse comitatus on Assad. I believe that that's going to be difficult for him to do. You know, I don't understand why he keeps waving, the fanning the flame of animosity with Syria when we clearly don't need to be there and Russia could easily take over the region and they were doing such a good job. I'm really not sure of our long-term goal in Syria. It makes no sense. We're not really protecting humanitarian concerns when we destroy countries and turn them into war zones and wastelands. 
So it's highly likely that we're just there for some ulterior motive, and I don't think that's right. According to Bob Woodward, he tried to issue posse comitatus on Assad. Okay, well, Bob Woodward, you know, he stands by his wood word. Yeah, but unfortunately, who cares? I wish what he said mattered, but at this point, we're so far down this uh, this sliding scale of, of treason and corruption, protected by treason and corruption, that we really can't really make heads or tails of what these people are saying. Mueller is working like a like a garden slug in in his diligence. Though I expect I respect his diligence, but he's too slow. We should have made progress by now. This is he's waiting for something, and I, God forbid he's waiting for the midterms, because if he doesn't reveal any more evidence in the uh, obstruction of justice charges that he must file, because Donald Trump clearly committed obstruction of justice when he fired James Comey. Clearly, he even admitted it. He wanted to stop the Russian thing when he told Lester Holt that. That is obstruction of justice by definition. So what's he waiting for? Okay, the inmate confesses the murder of a black man a letter to a white supremacist group. Wow. So he's just saying he killed a black man. A Tennessee jail has intercepted a letter from an inmate to a white supremacist group which he confessed to killing a black man. He's charged with the murder of the death of a 40-year-old Robert Miller who was set ablaze at a VA-assisted living home. He burned him to death. Wow. The letter has Rutherford County prosecutors considering further investigation to determine if hate crime sentencing enhancement could be applied. Well, the letter is just, at this point, hearsay. Why are Subaru Outback owners always smiling? Because Subaru Outback holds its value better than any other vehicle in its class, according to ALG. Even better than Toyota RAV4. Go with the industry leader, Subaru Outback. What do you do with that? There's no hotline to call up the FBI and say, hey, some guy says he's a serial killer. I wish there was. I can't even get the FBI to call me back. I don't think I want to improv that. Thank you, though. Your requests are a little bit bizarre. You're starting to seem like a psycho. Okay, Guy Smiley, what you got? Chinese principal sacked over back-to-school pole dance. Good. I was a little bit upset about this. Uh, this popped up in the news last night, and we're getting our, our liberalization of our schools has taken a new turn. We saw pole dances going on in, in elementary schools in Beijing, a kindergarten principal in China trying to li- liven up a formal back-to-school ceremony with a racy pole dancer was fired after angry parents lit up social media with complaints. Like uh, both schools across China, the Qin Hu. Uh, kindergarten in the southern east city of Shenzhen marks the start of the school year with a ceremony usually consisting of performances and speeches. But this one had a risque pole dance. Okay, we didn't see much of a pole dance, and good we didn't, because it's not really appropriate. My platform is uh, is that I haven't killed anyone? What? What kind of a platform is that? You had a person admit to you that they were a hitman? What can I do with that information, let alone believe it? Akira Hidiotora. Yeah, exactly. Uh, if, if you have a... a a person tell you that they're a hitman or a serial killer, I think you should be able to call up the FBI with a hotline and talk to them, but I don't see any effort at all to get people to, you know, report others. And they would simply say, well, do you have any proof? And you'd say no. And they'd say, thank you for calling. Yeah, that's very strange. Watergate investigation took over two years, and there was almost nothing in the news about it until the end. Yeah, well, that's because we were watching uh, wrestling. Mexican wrestling. Yeah, I remember my grandfather was sitting there watching Mexican wrestle, wrestling when they interrupted the Watergate sh- show to interrupt his Mexican wrestling, and he was really upset. He had to sit there and listen to Watergate. Yes. Uh, my platform should be creating... A, yeah, we are talking... We talked about creating a 1-800-REPORT people. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, it could be a universal reporting call line. Well, that way we don't have to have du- separate duplicate staff. We could have people taking calls on reporting mufflers that are pl- spewing fumes. And it could be a federal hot- hotline that would work as an intermediary with the state governments to try to deal with really bad polluters. So if you got three calls reporting somebody's polluting, you would look into that muffler. Similarly, if we got three people call up and say that somebody's daughter was forced to marry their rapist and Sharia law was being performed in Dearborn, Michigan, we'd send a detective system out there, a federal detective group, to work with local law enforcement to bring justice to the territory or the area that's afflicted with this Sharia law. Trump isn't doing anything to stop Sharia law from being perpetrated upon the American people. Nor is he stopping anything like the building up of munitions and bullets and armaments by 24 different Muslim extremist groups in America. And this most recent capture of the New Mexico group and and subsequent release is a very strange and bizarre uh, occurrence. Federal authorities are now taking over, but it's like they're coveting, they're controlling the situation. It looks like these people were working in some sort of a secret way to uh, create Muslim terrorists out in New Mexico recently. Okay, there you go. Goy, Goy, you're already prosecuting yourself right now by by coming in the room. I mean, everything I just you just wrote is going to be used against you in a court of law. Yeah. I know. See, we know that a lot of the uh, doxers are coming in here and acting like normal people and thinking they can just have a normal conversation with us. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're using all your information against you and will be used in the future when we take in. in uh, obviously, we're going to be looking at some, some paybacks. Any PayPal transaction is overseen by the government. So I understand all, all of you are getting paid through PayPal. <laughs> Well, you got to admit, the the people that get those uh, crisis acting jobs with GoFundMe sites included, that's completely com- completely hidden. Nobody knows who's making those payments. Now, if Mark were to set that up, I, I'm not going to tell him how to operate. That, that would be a mistake. But that's what people do to hide in money and, and transfers. It happened all the time. I wouldn't do it. I know, they're using PayPal. How stupid can Mark be? And there's a complete record of this dating back to when he started doing this. So he says he's making PayPal payments to people. Uh, every one of those people is going to get a felony, and their PayPal account is tied to their record and their name. So, yeah, I, I find it kind of funny. Are they that stupid? Really? Okay, a, a friend hung poster of themselves friends hung posters of themselves at McDonald's and no one noticed for weeks okay so let's establish that these people are friends and they hung a poster of themselves at McDonald's, this is major news folks and they created themselves and surreptitiously hung in a, a Houston market so yeah, so they just they created a McDonald's poster and put it up there and even the staff didn't even notice it. That's so funny. Well, it just shows you people don't care. They don't they don't care about the backdrop of their world. Who does? Really? Can you expect Dave, it's twenty eighteen. No one but blacks get in trouble. That's not true. You could easily get in trouble uh, driving interstate with marijuana in Oklahoma. You could get pulled over and charged with a crime, and they can take all the money in your pe- in your credit cards, drain your entire de- de- debit card, whatever you got. Uh, a marijuana cigarette in Oklahoma is a major deal. I don't care if you're black or white. We still have a country that is has these police forces that are doing this brutality too and beating people up. Our president isn't doing anything. I know. PayPal has your ID. I know, misanthropy. Well, all those pop ads in the wall are all meaningless. Everything's meaningless at this point. We're all we're all facing this meaninglessness that's surrounding us. I think it's the lithium in the air we're breathing. I just think that we're being slowly poisoned. 
I'm not the only person in the country that believes that. If you wonder why you feel a little listless and bored and you're driving to work and you're going, oh, I got to get the potatoes and the milk on the way home, okay. It's, it's lithium. It has to be. Nanoparticles are floating in our atmosphere, creating a massive amount of uh, air pollution. And these are the things that they're dumping on us, chemtrails. Now, I don't make a point of talking about chemtrails every night, maybe three or four nights out of the week. <laughs> But uh, clearly, this is something that a third party should take on. Well, I have a lot of respect for people who survive in this economy. I'm amazed you people are even hanging in there. Really. Well, see, thank you for that information, Oigoy. All of this goes into a file. You're very helpful. Tell Mark you've been very good to provide information like that. All right. Dave, we have V patterns all around us in the air, yeah, in the air we breathe. I'm a little upset that it's happening. Uh, I get sprayed every day. We had chemtrails over our house over the past three or four days all over the place. I don't know what they're doing. I know that the weather gets a little bit more cloudy. We're like a sponge up in the Washington area. So we pull all the water from Southern California up here. Camera roll. It's not there. Screenshots, save pictures, no. Yeah, I think I don't have that. <clears throat> yeah, I don't have that. But we saw a videotape of, uh, we made videotape of the chemtrails over Mount Shasta when we were driving over the mountains. And they were heavily spraying Mount Shasta, which means they're using Mount Shasta as a water collection point. And when you go to Mount Shasta, it's pretty full right now, almost too full as we head into the winter. So it could be Mount Shasta could burst. They may be working on bursting Mount Shasta and drying up LA and burning it down. That's what weather warfare is, and I think that's what they're up to. It's not a stretch for me to think that this is going on on a daily basis. So we, we take on tough subjects like weather warfare. We think our country's under attack. I do. Uh, I know Scissor Fight has been talking about, you know, his concern about all these chemtrails that are over his house in California. I think it's pretty serious that they get away with this. Not fun. They want to turn us into a bunch of mindless idiots. They want to make us, you know, seem like we're almost stupefied to the point where we're stupid and we just accept it every day the same old thing been there done that here we go again here we go again been there done that there's nothing new to it i felt this rush before and as we have reached it Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so we'll change the uh, subject beyond that. Yeah, somebody said, David, your, your entire show is the same every night. Not really. No, we take on, uh, you know, new subjects every single night is kind of different. We got Bob Woodward's phone call with the president tonight. I thought that was good. Let me play a, a copy of that from the pre-show. President Trump is clearly upset about this book, and on August 14th, 
he called Bob Woodward when he found out it was coming out and Bob, with the president's permission, recorded the phone call and we're going to play you a clip of it. This is where it becomes apparent to the president that Bob has sources inside the White House. I've got to go talk to people and see them outside of the White House and outside of their offices and uh, gained a lot of insight and documentation and it's, uh, you know, it's a tough look at the world and your administration and you. Right. Well, I assume that means it's going to be a negative book, but, you know, I'm some I'm sort of 50 percent used to that. That's all right. Some are good and some are bad. Sounds like this is going to be a bad one. It's really a turning point where Bob says a tough look at you. And even though the president is sort of funny, he says 50 percent of the time, you can hear that his tone of voice changes. At one point you hear Bob Woodward on the phone call saying, I broke my spear on it trying to get to you. So clearly he's talked to several people and the president uh, keeps saying he wishes he'd talked to him, but uh, he says he's ready for another bad book. This is the so, president. We're still waiting on a tweet. Go ahead. Right. So if you read the transcript, which I believe we now have posted on CNN.com, we have yeah. the transcript of the whole 11 minute call. What you see is that Bob requested an interview with the president through six different people, including Kellyanne Conway, who gets on the phone call in the middle of it and admits that Bob put in a request. Mm -hmm. And then throughout the call, President Trump keeps saying, well, I didn't hear about it. I didn't hear about it. And then Bob says to him, well, I, didn't Lindsey Graham, Senator Lindsey Graham? And he says, oh, yeah, 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 he did very quickly, very quickly he did. Right. And right. then he right. says, that's true, that's true. So there's one of those uh, Trump 180s. President Trump is clearly yeah. upset about this book. And on August 14th, he clearly is upset about the book. Been there, done that. Okay, we got a little uh, link here from... Okay, thank you. Okay, there we go. Okay. Do 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 do. I'm looking at my social wall right now. I'm clearing up. Ace fan is in there. Okay, good. Whew. Okay. Somebody came in here, Fat Vinny says, I've diagnosed many viewers in this popular program with having Trump derangement syndrome. <laughs> We're going to delete you. And your waffle pictures. Okay. Wow. Apparently we got a lot of links here. I can't believe all these people have just posted. Thank you so much, Ozzy Music. All right. That was four years ago. Oh, okay. All right, we're up and running now. Thank you. Yeah, it looks like Norway in the background there, in the fjords in Norway. Yeah, well, I don't think that I know where this is for now. Well, Woodward is who he is. He's a, a giant at journalist. He, he's one of the greatest investigative journalists of our time. We're lucky to have his take on the Trump nightmare administration. Russiagate is conspiracy for people that aren't into conspiracies. Interesting, yeah. Well, I think everybody is realizing the word conspiracy is not a bad word. We're trying to get to the bottom of why our country allowed the Russians to control the election. Uh, apparently, Obama tried to stop them, but Mitch McConnell said something to him saying he wouldn't sign any bills, so he threatened them. It turns out Mitch McConnell is working for the Russians because he received money for election, re-election Mitch McConnell. Antifa protesting Soros for non-payment of funds. 
Where's the money? No payment, no protest, so much for the resistance. Paid to be angry? How real is that? Yeah, we've always said that the Antifa movement was just moveon.org on steroids. And now they're not even getting paid by George Soros. He, he sees the wrong in his ways, maybe. Or maybe he realizes the sliding scale of, of lack of returns. You can't keep faking riots in America, Mr. Soros, and expect the American people to buy that BS. I don't think Russiagate is a conspiracy theory. I agree. It's a fact. We know now it's true. It, it happened. Our country has a guy who cheated as our president. I mean, how screwed up is that? Well, it's a wonder that Trump will even let Woodward interview him. Well, that was Woodward's point. He couldn't really get to interview him. So he, if he's going to come out with a second article, I doubt it's going to be any major difference. I don't believe any of the manufactured protests either, but you know what really bothers me is the truth has been manipulated so greatly with all these false flags and lack of evidence. We've seen so many different cases of BS coming out of our government without any solid views. Even the, Ma the Mandalay Bay shooting showed no bodies at all. There was this fake view of, uh, of somebody with blow-up dolls or a uh, fake... These, these are rubber dolls that look like bodies. They use them in crisis events all the time. There's some guy made a quick video of that, but it was just so fake, it was not even funny. Uh, then there was this situation, Parkland shooting, the Marjorie Stoneham Douglas shooting, in which Nicholas Cruz uh, somehow... Nick Cruz somehow became a, a wild gunman, yet nobody saw him with a gun. He was seen walking out calmly with all the other students. So he's being targeted as a patsy in an event that may not have even had any real deaths. We don't know. So we still don't have any solid evidence those people lived there. So here's the, uh, the image of the cannabis that I was showing you earlier. It surrounds, the CBD oil surrounds the cancer cell and starves it off. That's what makes this quite a remarkable solution for people who develop cancer. And the, the government's ignored testing of this particular benefit over the years, acting like it should just keep cannabis illegal and we can't test it so it's illegal, so we can't test it. It's like a do-loop, self-justifying do-loop. We can't test it, therefore we don't know how effective it is. We don't know how effective it is because we can't test it. How are you going to eat any pudding if you don't eat your meat? That kind of thing. Yeah. Mark is stepping it up, giving out houses in Dubai and castles in Somerset, England to the trolls. It doesn't matter, you can't stop me. I'm unstoppable. I'm, I'm amazed somebody's fronting the money for this. That must a person must be incredibly inbred and stupid. Boy, boy, you just proved that you're no longer a relative, relevant person here. You're a troll. We got enough information out of you. We just banned you. You became no longer beneficial. Asset DJ is providing more information now. So Asset DJ, how do you know about Mark? Are you an Asset DJ of his of Mark's troll uh, operation? Here's a good example of how you can stage events and get people what, whatever you want to say. True Blue, good evening. Oh no, I'll play that Sasha Baron Cohen. That's a Russian collaborator, I'm pretty sure. Sasha Baron Cohen, every time he comes up with these uh, spoofs about stupid Republicans, it coincides with the American people having stupid Republicans kowtow to Russians and Eastern Europeans. Uh, the coincidence is just too great for him not to be an agent of Russia. Yield then stops, says, how could Trump get away with treating the largest trading partner with such little respect? Well, I don't necessarily not believe anything. I take everything with a grain of salt. So how could Trump get away with treating the largest trading partner with such little respect? Well, let's start with uh, the meeting of Xi Jinping and Ivanka Trump. Closed door meeting. We don't know what happened. We don't know what transpired. We know that Xi Jinping allowed Ivanka Trump to release 38 patents that they had held in abeyance. 
that had Donald Trump's name on it. Trump Escort Service was one of those patents. Why would Trump want to buy a patent for Trump Escort Service? Very suspicious. Oh, you're not one of his uh, cronies? Some troll told you to tell you that. Oh, so it's just hear- hearsay is all it is. I'm going to write in the notes hearsay so we don't think you're part of it. Okay. Yeah, I don't think spreading hearsay is really of any value, but I kept a copy of it. All right, thanks. Trump respects his dollars, end of the respect, that's it. Trump doesn't have a lot of money. He's in debt. That's why they have leverage against him. And you should have realized that when you voted for him. He has a $3 billion uh, asset, they claim, but all of it looks like debt. It's mountains of debt and properties that are heavily leveraged. So I don't think Trump is really the billionaire he claims to be. He's always kind of pushed the limit on that. He even called up a phone. A phone call has been recorded by a person at... Forbes magazine when they had the Fortune 500 or the Forbes 500 top billionaires and Forbes said that they recorded the call and it was a recording and it really was Donald Trump's voice pretending to be a a press agent and talking about how he should be a billionaire because his combined assets with his dad Fred had come to a billion dollars and he kept saying he was begging to be considered on their Forbes list they have a copy of that phone call so he's a wannabe. He's always wanted to be a billionaire. Yeah. Yes, my hair is voluminous. Very voluminous, yes. That's because I wore it up like that. <laughs> thing. So now when I put it down, it's like still poofing. And hurting. Yeah, well... It didn't hurt when it was up. It's just now when it's like trying to settle back down. Yeah, I mean, all of your, your uh, follicles have been forced up today. So now they're like dropping down and they all have to, have to go through this metamorphosis. Did you want to spray uh, like a rosemary in your hair to calm your follicles or something? I have rosemary. Uh, ugly thing conditioner. Okay, well, rosemary is a natural spray I use. I know. I, I didn't go outside. I know. It takes a while for these to transition. It's funny. I think the Democrats are going to win the, uh, the midterms and we'll take the House. I have I have hope that they will. <sighs> I'm not a, a Democrat anymore, but I, I can tell you we need to get some accountability. We need to at least get the House to accept an impeachment process and let the Senate, ruled by the Republicans, make the final decision. Because their party is going to go down with Trump if Trump really did collude with Russia, which it looks more and more like he did. I'll be back. Thanks. Okay. It does seem like I just came back inside, but I was in the other room, uh, ra- resting and relaxing. It is sunny out in Washington State, that's true. Okay. My hair looks like a lioness. I know, I had it up, and now it's down. And I actually felt more comfortable up than down. Usually it's the opposite way. But it actually felt better. Up. But yeah, it's big hair. Big hair. David's right. I do, I have very thick hair, that's true. It's It's very thick. It's true. Okay. Is it still sunny outside? No, it's getting dark. I think now it's dark. Let me check. Yep. It's dark now. The sun went down. It's around... It's like dusk. A little bit darker than dusk. 
there's a new season of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I've never seen any of those episodes. Is that a good show? It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. All right. I have been following the news. I think we should do a little bit of trivia. I wanted to get through that. Oh, that show, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, is emotionally and ethically impoverished or something. Oh, obscenely ridiculous comedy? I don't know if I do like that. My only comedy is education-related or wordplay. I probably wouldn't like that, Ticken. Oh. I think maybe I did finish it. Yes, because I had White Dwarf, X-Ray, and Zodiac. Okay, good. I'm done with that. So we don't have to do trivia. Maybe I'll do the... Uh, just look in the news and see what's going on there. Should I stay connected to the world and look at the news? No. Brett Kavanaugh declines to shake Parkland parents' hand at the confirmation hearing. John Kyle is named to succeed, succeed John McCain in the Senate. Mueller is going to accept some written answers from Trump. Married with Children was your favorite show. I remember watching that. I don't know if I ever laughed at that, though. I did kind of find it offensive, I guess. The hills are alive. Yes. Okay. I must have missed something. I don't follow what Asset DJ is saying. Misanthropy feels like you can't say far out offensive things anymore because people think you're being serious when you're being funny and they become confused. Did, um,. I don't know. Yeah, I guess I am. That is interesting. I guess I am hesitant to say things that I think might be offensive, but then that prevents us from opening up and having deep conversations. I don't know why David doubts that we went to the moon and landed. I really don't. Other than the internet. That's the only thing I can think of, True Blue. Oh. 
Yeah, I think I think he does believe things he reads on the internet. Does that mean I have to leave when David comes in? I don't know. Not necessarily. Oh, hello, Anita CD. Your name says a lot in words. It's a big burden at the time. Oh, sorry. I wasn't realizing you guys were having that conversation. So, some couple saw some homeless guy and put together a GoFundMe page to raise and ended up raising $400,000 that they raised on behalf of a homeless guy, but then they didn't give it to the homeless guy. And the homeless guy's attorney found out that basically the couple spent all the money. Oh, Tropical Storm Gordon is slamming the Gulf Coast. A tree fell on a trailer in Escambia County, Florida, killing one person. Wow. Oh, Ant Acid. I think it's Anita CD, yeah. Oh, you heard about that? A forensic accountant is looking over it and will report back to the judge on his findings by September 9th. Thank you. I don't have to read the rest of the article. Thanks for the update, misanthropy. You have in it. Typhoon Jebi, nine dead. As the strongest storm in 25 years has hit Japan. Typhoon winds overturn a truck on a bridge in Japan. Did you have any dinner, honey? I had a piece of pineapple. Are you hungry at all for a little uh, tortilla with some pesto in it? Well, I think I'm going to have that little um, noodle oh, that dish. Because I got a tortilla with pesto in it. Oh, you already made it? Sure. I can give you half of it. Yeah. You have that too. Yeah, that sounds good. Oh, okay. Wow, in South Africa, a munitions depot exploded and killed eight people. Wow. Schools were supposed to open, I guess, in a one school district strict near us and they are not open. Okay. Good to know, Miss Anthropy.
I don't know why there's fake names in the chatters lists. Is there any good news? Uh, certain schools have reached districts. I mean, certain school districts have reached agreements with their unions and are starting school. <laughs> Some districts haven't, but certain ones have. That's the good news. Yeah, do you think the internet is full of trolls and misanthropists? Maybe that's true. <laughs> pretty good. Uh, all right. Amazon is now worth a trillion dollars. Wow. Anita pie sounds like I need a pie. And some Kramer Remix says he thinks the trillion dollar valuation for Amazon seems too low. What is JD.com? Anyway, there's uh, Richard Liu was arrested on an allegation. Oh, misanthropy says Amazon wasn't worth anything and still they until they started that government contract to spy on people. Oh, there's a rumor that Samsung is going to debut a foldable smartphone this year. That's pretty cool. Samsung. Oh, wow. There were a pair of stolen ruby slippers, red, ruby red slippers from the Wizard of Oz. They were found by the FBI after 13 years. But the search continues for those responsible, says the FBI. A video recorded by the Parkland shooter was released. Um, can we clone cart? Kim Kardashian, you ask, and make brothels with her clones? You think that would be a technology fulfilled for you? Wow. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, Samsung, the foldable flip phone thing. Let me get that for you. I'll show it to you and then I'll post the link. I don't know if this is it. No. So here it's on a Google thing. Samsung rumored to debut the first foldable smartphone this year from Mac Rumors. According to Co, it's time to deliver an affordable device after Samsung research revealed that there is consumer interest in such a device. I, I don't know. Maybe True Blue. David believes it's true. 
Co. declined to share details on how a folding screen might work. But at IFA last week, he said that Samsung is trying to work out the details on differentiating it from a tablet design. If it folded four times, you would buy it. Okay, so they're saying every device should have a meaningful message to the end customer. They should answer the why, why they made it. Yeah. Um, yeah, anyway. They should, no. Yeah, absolutely. I'll give you this link. Oops. You read a book called Natural Capitalism and you told me about it. And well, this is a f different thing. I think this spelled the foldable flip phone. The foldable flip phone. K Samsung is possibly going to come out with this bendable display. Expendable display. Bendable. Bendable display. Oh, yeah. Foldable. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I mean, admittedly, a, a tablet that can open up to a 10-inch tablet from a 5-inch you know, profile, a footprint, sounds really good. That's funny, Chicken. All right. Thanks, sir. Am I finished? Yes, you are done. And you can have your uh, your oh, tortilla yeah. under glass. Tortilla and maybe the pasta. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have the pasta. Actually, I think I'll do the pasta. Well, the tortilla under glass is, is absolutely uh, cheesy. It's provolone, so it's got that cheesy. And then I put a little pesto from your pesto jar in there. Thank you. And it's an organic tortilla, so... Enjoy. It's not much to eat, though. Thanks, Sarah. Everybody appreciates her here. You really find Kim Kardashian that attractive you'd want to clone her? Are you serious? Okay, whatever. Maybe you're, you're Greek, so of course you do. <laughs> of course. I shouldn't even question. You know, I, I don't know a lot about Kim Kardashian. She is a beautiful woman. I can see her uh, her beautiful, you know, face, tan, the look. The look. Isn't there like a clash going on between her and Chloe? Isn't there something happening there? The look of Kardashian is in your eyes. Too. So you like the big large hourglass figure like the Mae West figure that's what you're into some guys really are into that yeah uh, we've got Princess Batea, Batara saying I want to F Donald Trump do we really want to play that I don't think so that's very disrespectful thank you Bingo, why would the world be ganging up on you? I mean, you're the last guy they'd gang up on considering you, you provide so many links and you question all the conspiracies and make sure none of us believe any of them. And, of course, you're against marijuana legalization. Why would they want to pick on you? You're like the Jeff Sessions in the room, Bingo. Except Donald D Trump doesn't want to fire Jeff Sessions because he doesn't support legalization of marijuana. Donald Trump doesn't support legalization of marijuana either. He's never said it. There's a rumor on the alt-right sites that, oh, Donald wants to legalize. Oh, yeah. No, he's never said that once. Show me one clip of him saying he wants legalized marijuana. I want to be able to help people. I mean, I see so many benefits to people who are suffering to get this type of... Uh, cannabinoid oil surrounding the cancer cell and choking it off. I mean, this sounds really, really hopeful, actually. For a lot of people. Trump stole my ideas, that's right. And that's not appropriate in a country where you need an idea man to lead the nation, not a guy who steals ideas. That's what you got, a guy who steals ideas, not an idea man. Big difference. I can come up with new ideas rapidly. We've come up with all kinds of new ideas on our show. Right, Alien Island, we talked about the possibility of creating an island for people who are uh, illegal aliens. 
it's not impossible. You know, Papillon was a movie with Dustin Hoffman and Steve McQueen. Great movie, Papillon. Spelled P-A-P-I-L-L-O-N. Papillon. I think it's a French word. It was an island movie uh, which they put prisoners on islands. They stuck them there. It worked. It was... (laughs) I mean, people die fighting for democracy. (laughs) Laura and I never did that. I don't think we actually know exactly what it's like to put people on an island, but it would be interesting to put people on an island with food, enough to survive long enough to, and seeds, enough to grow food, and just airdrop water and, you know, give them necessary supplies, let them, you know, dog eat dog, eat it out, you know? I mean, what do you expect? I'll tell you, what do you expect? So we're recommending an alien island. That's a new idea that just came in the room last week. One on the west coast, one on the east coast, something big. Turn it into a nice place, you know, comfy, special. I don't know how that got in there. I'm, w- I'm looking for my island, and I just had it here, and it was like last night's... We had all kinds of good stuff last night. We had waterfalls. Yeah. And we're losing the whole concept. Holy crap, your credit score went up 80 points since I last checked and haven't done a damn thing. I can buy a tiny house soon. Hey, good for you, misanthropy. Well, good for you. Yeah, so you're buying things with credit cards, and you're adding to your, your credit worthiness. Sucking on that credit uh, chain will basically cost you uh, a lot of interest over the long run. You will be, they'll be mining you for interest money. You'll be part of the the norm. How do you like being part of the, the norm, the proletariat of credit card junkies? Peru, 8K. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Okay, we got a tour brochure of Peru coming up tonight in 8K quality. That's phenomenal. I, I'd like to show you a little bit right now. Just we've got to solve the, the fresh water problem for Alien Island for sure. So desalination systems that would be bulletproof would be the way to go. Beautiful Peru. Yeah, in 8K. Whoa, that's scary. And you can even speed it up with the faster speed controls. Even the donkeys are going faster. Everything's going faster. Life is going faster. Have you ever noticed how time flies when you're having fun with somebody else? When it doesn't, you know, when you're all alone and you got to do something, exercise is even harder. Well, I guess Trump is just a guy who you voted for, you know? I don't know why you voted for him. I told you. I warned you about him. I can't explain his behavior. Okay, so that's going to be cool. We'll look at that later tonight. Thank you. Bingo. Trump can't be seen in the hole he's digging. Oh, yeah. Trump tried to smear you saying you were the stock, you were the stock market's new world order fixer. No, I don't think that. Trump never said a damn thing about me, Endgame. I don't. I, I'm a believer that I I can measure the stock market's uh, vulnerabilities. I believe I can assess their vulnerabilities. Sure. I know that the stock market's got numerous areas to drop. Unfortunately, that's not exactly a way it fix it. There's $24 trillion in our money markets without any backing whatsoever. No FDIC or anything. That's a pretty uh, scary $24 trillion. Wow, so why don't I trust NASA? You know, we often wondered why we never get a straight answer from NASA. Never a straight answer, NASA. Well, they're in the business of, they're like a PR agency for a space command center created by Harry S. Truman. 
The Space Command Center is the military wing of NASA, which we don't hear about. Trump is calling it a space force. It's been around since 1946. Trump is not developing something new. But look at this. Why don't I trust NASA? When your spaceship suddenly starts leaking air, you fix the hole with duct tape and a gob of epoxy. And this is what they actually said. They, they said they fixed it with a gob of epoxy and, and duct tape. An air leak into a vacuum of space. And that's the same image from a studio album by Remedy Drive, a contemporary Christian music song. So they just pulled some stock photo out and put it out there. This is why. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> God, you think they would have covered their traces and erased the stock photo once they used it. They're not even that concerned. They're just like hacks doing impersonations of spacewalking. Yeah, absolutely. I said, DJ, the blimp plane that I'm promoting, the idea is to get a uh, to get some sort of a, a a vape lounge in the back of the of the blimp plane. Yeah, the blimp plane is a remarkable piece of technology that I, I think could work. I think we've talked about it quite a bit on our show. I don't want to get too deep into it. Because obviously the blimp plane could take up about 15 minutes of discussion. I'd rather just talk about Trump the puppet. But yeah, a vape lounge will be at the back of every single blimp plane. I, we don't want it at the front because if the families are there, they don't want anyone breathing THC. All of, all of our air will be filtered and completely uh, clear of any THC. Only the vape lounge will have THC in it. Yeah, you'll have like a mild level of like 3% THC in the vape lounge. So everybody will get high when you walk in there. Hi, hi, are you high? Hi, oh, hi, hey, you're really high. You better cover your eyes. Ooh, hey, is that, how's that? So I'll be the uh, greeter at the vape lounge. It'll be an audio animatized version of me. Hello, welcome to the vape lounge. Hello, my name is David. Welcome to my vape lounge. And then it'll be a CGI hologram. So you will be able to see, you know, me in person, but you'll be you'll pass right through me. Is it safe to put your passwords at work? Will your employer abuse you? Uh, it's never safe to use your passwords at work. What kind of a question is that? The hand of Putin controls the stage, creates confusion with his hate. Yeah. Trump has talked about me on CNN and Fox. I don't think that. No, I don't have any proof of that end game. You're making this up. Okay, we got something to show you. Terrible Tim. All right, represent, represent. Terrible. He's going to talk about something. And this is uh, at 153, is that right? We're going to play Terrible Tim. He's got a very verbal approach toward everything. Terrible Tim is like a guy who just talks to the camera, very in your face. I like the rawness of his work. Hey, by the way, let, let's get this out in the open. We found, a Scissor Fight found a picture today that really shocked us. You know how we've been alluding to the possibility that James Alephantis might actually be a Rothschild? You remember that picture of uh, e Evelyn, Evelyn? Well, anyway, uh, his face was seen in this group picture with the Rothschild family. What is James Oliphant's Comet Ping Pong doing on a photo shoot of the family Rothschilds? Yeah, that's pretty intense. It does kind of look like him in the face. Let's measure his face up against this one. Okay, we're going to take a look at the facial structure of James Alephantis, the owner of Comet Ping Pong, and the 47th most powerful person, according to GQ magazine, in the world. You know, I, I'm going to reserve... Uh, judgment on this one, I, I'd say it's about a 95% match. The glasses obscure the details, but I see a possible match there. The nose is slightly different. 
but yeah, that was really good. Okay, let's look at Terrible Tim now. He's going to talk at 153. Publicity stunt on their part. <clears throat> and again, it says... Uh and then he got a hold of some duct tape and epoxy glue. And as Chris Hatfield said in his tweet, yeah, nice save. All right, so much for this save. Because now I'm going to show you. <laughs> the, the astronaut tweeted a picture of the hall. And this picture's been all over the, uh, the fake news. Now here's the problem. The picture of that hall is exactly the album cover of this band called Remedy Drive Commodity, full album. Their uh, album cover has the exact same hole in it. All right? So let's end this bullshit for good. Let's put this fake garbage to rest for good. It's time for you people to grow up. It's time to stop being a Sal Collar no nado. It's time for you to be to stop being a John Kirsch turd. Yeah, I don't really know if those people John Kirsch turd, but I see his point. Yeah, it's time to wake up, folks. They're using stock images to fake us out at NASA. Hey, we I support the moon hoax idea. Sarah supports the moon landing idea. I believe that since we haven't been back in 50 years, it's definitely, oy vey, it's definitely a, a classic a classic example of why aren't we back there mining the moon? We all talked about it. Oy oy, oy vey vey. Hey, Busy. Busy popped in over there at Periscope. All right. Illuminati backwards, it tananuti redirects to NASA government site. Well, that's easy to do. That can happen. Yeah, that's going to be 13 seconds. Let's take a look. And we got Terrible Tim coming up the whole video later tonight. I'm sure you'll want us to hear that. Oh, I know. Why are Subaru Outback owners always smiling? Because Subaru Outback holds its value better than any other vehicle in its class, according to ALG. Even better than Toyota RAV4. Go with the industry leader, Subaru Outback. Backwards, Itananumui redirects to an NSA.gov site. You know, that's something someone could actually do if they just wanted to play with words, you know. David, what must be uh, must one do to be able to live in a relationship with someone with such conflicting views? Oh, I see your point. Yeah, well, Sarah doesn't believe uh, exactly what I believe because we both have different views and knowledge of the subjects. Yeah, I, I've done different research just doing this show in four hours that she's in there watching TV. I'm watching the show and I'm sharing ideas. So my the evolution of my thoughts conflict well we've looked at the one picture that looks like a credible photo of the earth from a distance and she's shown it to me it, it's just a small little speck but what bothers me is that NASA recently uh, claimed they're shutting down uh, one of the, the the satellites that's doing the discovery satellite that's doing all the work taking pictures of the earth and they claim the blue marble pictures are pictures that were taken, static pictures that were taken and pieced together. When I have other information that tells me that an artist worked at uh, the NOAA organization and redeveloped all of those pictures themselves, and he even talked about it. I've seen an interview with an artist who claims he was the artist that created the blue marble. Let me see if I can Google that. So the photographs that NASA is pawning off has admitted that there are no photographs of the Earth. I 
unfortunately, he's a flat earth guy. Of. It's about Robert Simmon, a.k.a. Mr. Blue Marble. It's from some of his answers. Rather interesting. So let's take a look. What do you do and what is most interesting about your role here at Goddard? How do you help support Goddard's mission? His answer was, my role is to make imagery from Earth Sciences data. Okay, He makes images. He does not take photographs. I turn data into pictures. I look for new interesting events that NASA satellites have seen or that are hidden in the latest data to find anything interesting that shows off NASA's unique capabilities. Okay, so his name is Robert Simmon, works at, at Goddard Space Institute, and he definitely made it up according to this video. I'll give you a link to it. So yeah, we've got it. It's there. Right on. Thank you, man. And thank you, David, for getting that link for everybody to look at at YouTube. That's the guy that supposedly did the work at Goddard Space. So Blue Marble is completely contrived. There are no photographs of the Earth. So they're covering up the story by now saying they're shutting down the satellite. It's ridiculous. How convenient of them to shut down the satellite, considering we don't believe any of the photographs were taken outside of a certain area beyond the Van Allen belts that would actually have a, a, a telescopic ability to look back at the Earth. But the photograph that Sarah showed me looked almost like a joke. It's it's almost like a little star, twinkle, twinkle, little star. And, and then he, she said, yeah, that's the Earth from one of our distant travels to, to Mars or to, you know, Neptune. And they just found another planet, Planet 9, they call it, be hiding behind Neptune. It used to be called Pluto, remember that? Leonard, uh, this is not mainstream media. I'm the one leading the story about the, the Russian collusion. Uh, Trump is clearly working for Russia. It's not, it's not even a question. How can you not see that? Are you a Nazi? Have you heard of Captagon? In a not too distant future, beyond the Andromeda constellation, is Captagon. It's Captagon. Stimulant Captagon more dangerous than previously noticed. Syrian police show seized drugs and Captagon pills. So some sort of a stimulant, a banned amphetamine type stimulant linked to substance abuse in the Middle East and said to be favored by ISIS is more potent than previously thought, scientists said. Phenethylene, also known by its brand name Captagon, is a combination of amphetamine, a stimulant, and theophylline, a drug and traditionally used to treat respiratory diseases such as asthma. The latter greatly enhances the former's psychoactive properties, making the co-drug a powerful amphetamine. According to scientists from the Scripps Institute, it boosts the overall stimulant activity. Well, it's one of these uh, designer drugs used for creating super soldiers, I'll bet. And that's why it's being used in Syria by ISIS. Okay, so they have cameras. Yet they come up with every excuse to not give us a good picture of Earth. That's right. Now you started figuring it out. Yeah, the truth is apparent. So I'm sorry this bothers you, but it's pretty obvious Putin owns Trump. In fact, for years, uh, in fact, two or three years in the the social media, Russian social media, they use the expression Trump Nash, which means Trump is ours in the Russian. Yeah. Many of you are not Russian. You do not speak Russian, so you have no idea how we control, or I mean they control, sorry. Russia controls America. Yeah, I'm not Russian, I'm an American. But I pretend to be a Russian with that accent. Of course the Earth would look small from space, but we have zooming abilities. So you're just a rationalization. It looks like a twinkle, twinkle little star. Why do I want to see the gigapixel and zoom around? 
to look at all the Republicans as they congratulate Trump? Okay, we're looking at an interactive map, everybody. And we're going to try to find Maria Butina in here with the Russian Congregation of Supporters. We're at the uh, inauguration with Donald Trump in the mezzanine. And as you can see, it didn't go on for miles. Trump said it went on. Well, it did go on for miles, actually. Wow. That's impressive. That is pretty cool zooming ability, huh? Wow. I, you know, that makes me think about the Trump inauguration. Yeah, I think the press kind of gave him a crappy, uh, a crappy little, you know, yeah, it seems like he got quite a few down there. I wonder if we can see him saying to Melania, turning and saying those fateful words. Yeah. Let's see. Well, the whole thing, I, if, if we only we had a photograph of the behind the scene when he was standing there next to Melania and talking... He said something that was uh, extremely disturbing, and one has to wonder, uh, what exactly was it? Remember when Donald Trump, these are like famous captions of Donald Trump. Remember when he forgot what country he bombed? What happens, as I said, we just launched 59 missiles heading to Iraq. Well, you headed to Syria. We've just launched 59 missiles heading to Iraq. Well, you headed to Syria. Yes, heading towards Syria. My prayer that God will bless you, your family, 